Hello and welcome to ClickCentral.com. Um, the next video in the Flat Designer series um, is for us. Sorry it's taken a long time um, to, to sort of release this video, but um, here we go. In the last video we talked about is just setting up the basic design elements. So we talked about putting in the sort of different icons, the kind of the, the screen splitter and the side icons down the side and we looked at changing the colours. Now what I've done a little bit of work since then, so I've put the functionality in around this dashboard. So what this video is doing is just taking you to each the, the functionality sort of from a high level point of view, then in future videos what we're doing is actually looking into the, the nuts and bolts of each individual activity. So this is uh, the dashboard sort of design. So this is the dashboard design. At the moment I'm just concentrating on the, on the key um, objects that will repeat over each in each page and be consistent. Um, I have brought in some data structure which is the Northwind database so at the moment I'm not really interested in this element because this is just looking at the actual design and layout but to bring this in this data gives me some fields I can use so you can see filters being selected and etc etc. Okay. So it's talking you through the, the, the main the main sort of highlights of the page. You have the main area which is where all your dashboard elements will be, all your different charts and gauges and etc. etc. Um, so looking across the top we've got the dashboard title in there that's consistent across all sheets and then these are the navigation buttons these don't actually work at the moment but when I put in subsequent pages then they will and these will navigate you to the pages obviously you got the company logo there now here's when we should start making the the filters um, within Clip. So as we know Clipview is built around the filters and its associative model so there's different ways we can do that now what we're doing across the top here we've got space for we're about 12 filters using the multibox and the reason that they've done that here is these these filters are going to be the primary filters as defined by the customer so these are the filters that they will be using on a very regular basis and the idea here is, is as they make a selection they can see that and it's very visual it's there um, on the sheets and no matter what other sheets they look at they will still see them same filters information so that's one way of making a selection um, you've got the search um, there as well, which you can obviously make a wildcard selection if you don't know the field name, but you know what it is that you're wanting to, ser to search on a field value. Down the side, we put a few um, horizontal buttons. So these are just text boxes, and then over the top of them are Im images um, that was created in PowerPoint, and that was just uh, changed the orientation so it was vertical, so it fit in there. I possibly could do that a little bit more tidier, but it works for now. So the idea here is that you've got your sort of main filters across the top, and you also have um, categories of filters down the side. So if we if we select on there, then obviously there's different um, filters here. So we can make selection, and you can see the associative model working there. A little bit easier than using the multi boxes when you use the list boxes, but but from a space point of view, the multi boxes take up very little real estate. And give you lots of possible selections um, but using this object at the side gives you the ability to put in your list boxes and see the associative model and then hide it when you don't want to see it anymore and the same with employees okay so it's kind of grouping things together so you're not limited to three you can have multiples down there of groupings if you want you just have to make the buttons a bit smaller and make it fit in a bit easier now as you're making selections I'll show that again. So, uh, this here is the sort of the action button, so you can go backwards, forwards, and then this is your sort of current selection indicator. So at the moment, we've got nothing selected, so let's make sure we clear that, and that's nice and wide. If we make a selection now, it changes to a green colour. This is to indicate that selections are being made. At the moment, there's no current selection visible. I feel that, that does take up a lot of real estate as well. And more often than not, people are aware of the selections that they make. They, they're aware of, of, of what they you know, go in to do. Um, but just to give them an opportunity to see what they have done, they can click on there, and that will bring up a, a current selection sort of box here to allow them to, to, to see exactly what filters they've got in place. And again, this is giving them a lot more real estate so they can come on have a quick look and then switch it off when they don't want it anymore rather than as a defined box that sort of remains constant all the time the uh, the third and the final way um, of making selections is the, um, the the advanced filter so if we click that it'll open up a new box down here 
we can determine what fields we are going to look at um, through here. So we can we can change the table if we like. So we can look at all tables, or we can just look at products, for example. So the idea is we could search a field, and we could either do that just by scrolling through, or we could do that by by uh, searching here. So once we've decided which one we're going to to search, like product description, for example, probably not a very good example. It's like it's got nothing in the product code. There we go. So this has actually got some values within product code. So this now has all the different possible distinct values of that field. So the user can just make a selection there. The idea of this being is only so much space for, you know, filters across here, filters within, you know, the sidebar, any other filters you could add. But this advanced filter gives the opportunity to every single field, and the user can zone in on that field and make selections within the field value, and not just rely on the search, which can be a little bit slow depending on the size of your data. Okay, so that's it. So the next video is we're going to look at each individual object and see how that works um, functionally. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, please feel free to sign, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. It's Click Central, and also visit our blog at uh, clickcentral.com. I look forward to seeing you again, and uh, would be looking forward to hearing your comments as well. Thank you.